Welcome back once again for our nightly check-in story and special guest. I'm so glad you came back to join us on this fourth night together. I can't believe it's been four nights already. We started with this story of Goodnight Gorilla, and tonight I'm very excited that we are going to conclude the great K-pop tree. So why don't we get right to it? Because our special guest today, I have so much to tell you about them. So I want to leave a lot of time. So let's see, where were we? There was a boa constrictor and an iguana and a bee and some butterflies and a troop of monkeys and some birds and tree frogs and a jaguar and those prehensile tail porcupines and ant eaters and a three-toed sloth, and even a little child from the Yanomamo tribe. Now let's see what's gonna happen at the end of our story. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child, and all around him, staring, were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. Whoa, lost a page. There we go. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his ax. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree Suddenly, he stopped. He turned and looked at all the animals and the child. He hesitated. Then he dropped the ax and walked out of the rainforest. And believe it or not, that is the end of our story. The man did not chop down the great kapok tree. He heard the sounds, he smelled the air, and he saw all the beautiful animals. And he decided it wasn't for him. He was not going to chop down that great kapok tree. What do you think? I think that was a beautiful story. I especially loved all the beautiful pictures and the beautiful words that we read together. I thought it was a great story. Now, let's get ready to meet our special visitor from tonight. You know what I did forget? I forgot. Remember I told you there'd be a lot of Star Wars. I got Star Wars pajamas on tonight. And I even, if you can see them, I have my special Star Wars pants. Star Wars pants. I'm all Star Wars tonight. One of my favorites. Now. You ready to meet our special guest? Luckily, he's not dug down where I can't grab him easily. He's right at the top. Otherwise, I'd have to do some digging for this animal. Hmm. This is an animal that loves digging. Any guesses? Let's see. Oh, my God, him. Now, we're going to be a little bit of detectives tonight, some scientists. And if you're a scientist that studies reptiles, and amphibians, you're called a herpetologist. Herpetologist. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? That's what I dream to be one day. A herpetologist, someone who studies reptiles and amphibians, my favorites. Now, we're gonna be herpetologists and we're gonna remember those three things that made reptiles special. Scales, shedding skin, and ectothermic. And I want you to see if you can guess if this next animal is a reptile or maybe not a reptile. I don't know. Let's see. 
So here he is. This is, let's see him close. This is Oreo. What do you think of Oreo? Oreo is a very special kind of animal called a sand boa, a Kenyan sand boa. Now, that's from Kenya in Africa. That is where this sand boa is from. And his name is Oreo because he kind of looks like he's got Oreo cream right in the middle. And that's how he got his name. Seem to have a theme with some animals and being named after food. Sunday, Oreo, and then of course we have Marvel superhero names, of course. So this is Sunday, the sand boa. And sand boas are a type of snake. Hmm, I wonder, is a snake a reptile? Let's see, I know it might be hard to see, but I'm looking all down Oreo's body. And although they're very small, to me they look and feel a little bit like scales. Hmm, did you ever wonder what scales might feel like if you can't touch them? Well, I have a secret for you. We have scales too. I know, it's hard to believe. We have 10 little scales on our fingers and 10 little scales on our toes. Yeah, your fingernails. Your fingernails are made of the same stuff that a reptile's scales are made of. Yeah. So if you ever wanted to feel what a reptile might feel like, just feel your fingernails. You can do that right now. Your fingernails would feel smooth and a little bit hard like a reptile scales. Yeah, just like Oreo might have. So Oreo is absolutely covered in scales. And yesterday when I brought out, I'm gonna set Oreo down for a second because Oreo is not going to sit nicely on my hand. He's gonna wanna slither and it's hard for me to hold him and I don't wanna drop him. So yesterday when I showed some of the special bag of shed skin that I said was mostly snakes, I showed you one that happened to come from Oreo. This is a shed from Oreo. Now the tail broke off a little bit, but what's really cool, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it too well, is you can even see where his mouth would have been right here. And it's probably really hard to see. I don't know if we'll be able to see it, if it'll focus. No, maybe not, but you can even see where his eyes were. Here's another one. Here's another shed from a milk snake. Here's another one. Look at that. Long shed skin from a snake. Look, there's the head. See that? And you might be able to see the eyes on that one. Let's see if it's going to focus. Woo! Woo! Maybe not. But there's two eyes right up there. Right up there. Pretty cool, huh? So snakes, like I said, they shed in one big piece. They get a little itchy. Their eyes turn a little blue. And then they're going to have to rub their head on a rock. And then they kind of slither out and their skin comes off just like a sock in one piece. They shed their skin. Now, wait a minute. So if they have scales and they shed their skin, do you think they're reptiles? Ooh, I might think so. And I wonder if they're ectothermic. Hmm. I don't know if there's a way to tell, but hmm. He feels kind of warm from being near his heating pad that I have in there for him. So guess what? He's ectothermic. He's got scales, he sheds skin, and he's ectothermic. So he's a reptile, just like our lizards. So we met lizards that are reptiles, and now we met snake that is a reptile. Pretty cool, huh? So we met two kinds of reptiles so far. Maybe we'll meet another one. We'll have to see. So I thought that we could learn some really cool things about snakes because let me tell you, snakes are one of my absolute favorites. Now, right now, I don't know if you can see it, but Oreo is doing something really silly. Look right by his mouth. Oh, oh, Oreo, how rude. Oreo's sticking his tongue out. Do you see that? Hmm. 
What do you think he's doing when he's sticking his tongue out? I bet some of you know. It's a really cool thing. He's sticking his tongue out to smell. He smells with his tongue. Do you smell with your tongues? Let's give it a try. I'm gonna hold my nose. And I gotta try smell with my tongue. Ugh. Ugh. It didn't work. I could not smell with my tongue. Could you smell with your tongues? Mm, we can't smell with our tongues, but snakes, snakes can smell with their tongues. They stick their tongue out and they have a little forked tongue and they can smell the air this way and they can smell the air that way and they put it back in their mouth and they put it up on the roof of their mouth where there's two little holes and they can kind of take those smells and it tells them where their food might be. Maybe they smelled it a little more that way. Maybe they smelled it a little more that way. And that's how they help find their food with their wonderful smelling tongues. Look at him sticking his tongue. He's smelling all over. He's wondering what's happening. Now, I thought we could do one more cool thing with Oreo before we go. It is getting a little bit late. Oreo likes to play a game of don't blink. Should we try to play real quick? Let's see. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. He's just got such tiny little eyes. He's got tiny little eyes on top because when he digs in the sand, his eyes have to be up top so he can see if there's food nearby. So I'm going to play staring contest with Oreo. Let's see. Ready, Oreo? See who blinks first. Let's see if you can see. Oh, Oreo, you're really good at this. I don't know. Oh, I feel like I have to blink so bad. Oh, oh. Oreo beat me. Oreo won. He's much better at don't blink. Hmm. You know what, though? I'll tell you a secret. He cheated. Oreo is a master, not blinker. You know why? He doesn't have eyelids like you and me. He can't blink. All he has is a scale that covers his eye. He never, never blinks. He never, never closes his eye. In fact, when you saw the snake shed and those eye scales... That's what you were seeing, this scale that shed right off of his eye. Pretty cool, huh? So I don't know about you, but I think snakes are pretty cool, and I also think they're pretty darn cute. And I want you to be a little cute with me, because I think with three days practice, we might have our reptile song down to sing together to say goodnight. What do you think? Let's try it together. Are you ready? Reptiles have scales all around, all around. And reptiles shed skin when they grow, when they grow. And reptiles, they're cold-blooded, they're ectothermic, they're ectothermic. What do you think? I love reptiles. I don't know about you. But it's time. It's time to say good night, Sanboa. Are you ready? Good night, Sanboa. And good night, everyone. Thank you.